Hello, Deb Conf. Our next speaker is Mark Pearson, and and uh, and he will be talking about how Lenovo and Debian can advance their uh, relationship. Mark is a technical lead for the PC project at Lenovo. He is responsible for the Linux kernel bootloader open source applications used on Lenovo network switches. And last year, he uh, he moved to the Lenovo PC team, and uh, he's a Linux technical lead. And uh, he's just looking towards making a better relationship between Debian and Linux. This talk will be half uh, presentation, half BOF. So uh, let's uh, let's get it up for uh, Mark. Alrighty. Hello, hello. Oh, looks like I'm online. So uh, I think we're looking at making a better relationship between Debian and Lenovo. But you know, Debian and Linux oh. is cool too. Oh, whoops. You know, whoops. Sorry, my bad. My bad. <laughs> no worries. It's my all bad. good. <laughs> 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 okay. I don't. Um, <laughs> So hello everybody. Yeah. Um, so my name is Mark. Um, so just uh, actually, you know what? I'll, I'll go to the first like, introduction overview. Um, this is my sort of like second time ever presenting, and definitely my first time at DevConf. I'd like as much as possible for this to be interactive. Uh, have questions from you guys and make it more of a conversation. You know, part of collaborating. Uh, I'd like not to be doing too much talking myself, but I realize because of the way it is. Um, that's, that's how it is. Um, so, but yeah, questions on Etherpad be great. If anybody really wants to join in the Jitsi call, let me know and I uh, send it to my email, which will be up shortly, and I'll send you the Jitsi link. I've been told not to just post that um, in Etherpad. But yeah, so as interactive as possible. I have some slides to go through. Um, I'm going to kind of go through it, taking questions on the way. And I might just skip some of them if they don't seem that interesting. It's the main aim is to get questions from you and talk to you guys. and, and what you're interested in. So on that note, uh, moving forward, so I'd just like to introduce, there's actually two of us here. So there's myself, um, kind of got the introduction before. I joined the PC team uh, just almost a year ago, exactly, uh, beginning of August. Um, and I've been in discovering the joys of, uh, of, of Linux on PCs, what's involved, getting it running. Uh, it's been crazy fun, crazy busy. Um, so I'm the technical lead for the team. So. It's my responsibility is to work out how we get Linux going on the Lenovo platform. Uh, our Linux program has been growing a lot, and hopefully we'll continue to do so. Uh, and my colleague, John Trapasso, is uh, on here. Uh, John, would you like to do an introduction for yourself so I don't mangle it too much? Sure. So I'm the software product manager for our workstation business unit here at Lenovo. Um, I work, uh, I drive a lot of our Linux strategy as well as anything other else, OS and software related. Cool. Thanks, John. And yeah, jo John's my go-to guy. He's he's been around. Then he knows processes and the people in in, in Lenovo. Sometimes don't do that. Um, so just to give you an idea of topics that we can cover, um, and I'll do a little bit based on how things are going. Um, I put some slides together that I thought might be interesting. Um, and again, bit based on time, we'll see how it goes. So. Um, Jonathan mentioned in the uh, DPL bits that the Linux portal for Debian developers. So I was just going to give you a little bit more information on that one. I'm assuming people will be interested what's actually involved there. Um, we got web sales update. Big thing for us has been our web sales. So I'll just give an update of where we are with that. Um, and then I've done a slide on some specifics from my experience with Lenovo and Debian. Um, and then I was going to stop there and see what the questions are and, and go through those. Um, I do have other slides. Uh, we've been working on releasing a Linux platform to the web, so I can, I've got a slide just explaining some of the process that happens there, some of the steps, uh, what I've learned for it, so I can cover that. Uh, I've got a slide on some things that Lenovo is supporting Linux generally, so less Debian specific, but more, more for the Linux community. Uh, a slide on a tool we've got, ThinkLMI, that we've just released publicly, and some kernel patches that we're working on. And that my aim really is lots of questions and feedback. Um, I will keep an eye on Etherpad as things go on, um, and we'll see how it goes. And I know we've got a few people uh, who, who have been able to join the Jitsi forum, so feel free to jump in if I ever pause and then if you've got questions. Does, I was going to say, does that sound all, all sound good? I'm not quite sure how I get the feedback from this, but I'm going to just keep on rolling. OK. Um, so yeah, Jonathan mentioned the the, the portal for DPL. and, and Basically, we're looking for a way to, to, to make it easier to get uh, Lenovo hardware into developer. Um, 
hands. So there, it's it's the URLs to be announced. It should be very soon. The idea is that you log in with your. You have to have a Debian.org address. The aim is to keep it only. It's only for Debian developers. It's a you know it's it's a, it's aimed at, at, at you guys. Uh, and there's a discount on Lenovo products. Um, it's on all Lenovo products. It's not tied to just our Linux platform. So if you want to get some of the platforms that we don't have Linux support on, because that's the uh, hardware you want, that, that's, uh, that's good. Uh, just as a note, the screenshot is for the employee site, because I can't log in, because I don't have a Debian.org address. But Jonathan did test it out for us, and we will have it uh, live um, fairly soon. Um, so yeah, we and it will be initially just uh, it's going to be US, and I managed to get Canada, and we are working on the other geos. It just every geo has a different portal, so we have to work through those. Um, so that takes a bit of time. So the US one is almost ready to roll, um, or US and Canada, I should say. Um, but the, and we are we are hoping and planning to roll it out for other geos as well. Just they're going to be um, a bit behind. Uh, John, is there anything I've missed on that that you think we should cover? No, I think that was it. Thank you. Alrighty, so just I'm going to quick scan. If anybody's got some questions on Etherpad, um, okay. Okay, so there's a question. If I'm buying on Lenovo online, how can I be sure that laptop will fully work with Debian? <laughs> and that's a really good question. And honestly, I think uh, a lot of the time the answer will be um, it's it's hard to say. So. I will come back to that in a bit because I've got another slide um, that will cover it. So obviously, if you get one of our Linux certified platforms, one of the big things we try and do is make sure, it, well, one of the things we do do is make sure all the fixes go upstream. So um, you know, kernel patches uh, go upstream and, and all, all the other pieces go upstream. So really, it should work in Debian. Uh, my recommendation is, is quite often, especially with these new laptops, is go with testing. Um, and even then, there are still some hiccups. And we'll we'll cover some of those in a little bit. Um, so yeah, there's no guarantees it will work with Debian, is, is the short answer. There are some things we are doing to make that better. And overall, um, yeah, it is our aim is to support Linux upstream. So it should work for all the distros. OK. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'll cover LVFS as well. Firmware updates, LVFS, that's there. We'll, we'll, we'll cover that too. Um, and as the other question is, as and when US sales available, how will you let us know? Um, there should be some media announcements. I'm going to give you, uh, I'll give you a little bit more information on the US sales. There, there will be media announcements. They'll, I will be posting on our forum. If you guys want, I can stick a note in the Debian mailing list. Um, guessing Debian Devel. Um, so, does that cover? It's uh, yeah. We, honestly, we're still scrambling a little bit. So my screen's over there, which is why, if you're wondering, I'm looking sideways. You get my profile. Uh, it's very uh, Egyptian. Okay. So yeah, I will try. I, I will. I will. I will post a note to uh, Debian Devel. Well, no, that's a, a note to myself here. <laughs> Actually, I'll, I'll, I'll have a copy of these, so I'll do that. OK. Um, and there was another question. Uh, so just so you know, people who pre-posted questions, I'm not going to ignore those. I will come back to them. I'm just kind of trying to tag in with, with where the questions come up as we do the talk. There was uh, any prospects of Lenovo shipping on ARM64 or Arch64 laptop with reasonable specs? No. <laughs> no, 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 it's not on our roadmap. Right now, I've I've actually had discussions with ARM developers about how we can support Linux on ARM. It's it's a hard sell. Um, so um, so no. uh, right now, ARM is not on our roadmap. I'm afraid there's uh, there's some tricky pieces in there, but so not yet. Um, it's uh, it's a little bit customer driven as well. So okay. Oh, I see someone types up my answers. Great. OK, so I will roll on. Uh, so web sales update. Um, I don't know how interested the Debian community is, but so we do have um, 
the X1 carbonate is going to be the first one. Uh, it's cleared all of the hurdles. Uh, it's just basically at the last paperwork, it's waiting on the web sales team to enable it. Um, the web sales team is probably very frustrated with me asking lots of questions about what's going on. Um, their web sales team has committed to have it up before August 31st. Um, so that's coming up really soon. Um, I checked with them just yesterday morning and they still believe they're gonna meet this date. So I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful. So it should be August 31st, the X1 Carbon 8 should be up. Uh, we then have, um, Oh, that's strange. Um, uh, anyway, the, the, so we have uh, a few more platforms coming soon. Uh, I've listed them there. Um, so I should clarify X1 Carbonate, there'll be a Fedora and a Ubuntu option. Uh, P53, P1 Gen 2, there's a Fedora and Ubuntu option. The others are all going to have Ubuntu option on them. But essentially, the, the key point is they are they have been Linux certified. We test them with Linux and we are supporting them. And, and, and so that side of things and then there's a, a number of platforms coming later in the year as they become available right we're still working on the hardware enablement and testing um that side of things uh did i have one more oh no uh so anyway uh i'll just go back i should know my own slides better so um question on core boot support i'm not going to answer that one right now we'll come back to it i'm not ignoring you is that any questions specifically on platforms that I can take? I got a, I got a question though. Sure. Is that uh, so? Is a uh, is Debian going to be a like? Can we imagine Debian being a OS that will be pre-installed in the future? Or uh, it, it's certainly not impossible. Um, you know what? I'm going to answer that one on the next slide because the next slide I do have a Lenovo and Debian. Um, there are some challenges, to be honest, with doing Debian um, and getting it on. And that'd be nice to, I'd, I'd love to discuss those and get feedback from people. If we can't do it all in this because it's kind of hard to do the face to face with the typing and questions, uh, I'm very open to set up a call with questions and to understand it. We are, I'll get to it. We, we are supporting Debian. We want Debian to work on our platforms. We are testing with Debian, and I will get to that. But as a preload, um, there are more steps to that, and it's not it's not easy to do a preload um, uh, because of all sorts of things. So um, I will tell you this. So on platforms, can we please have idea pads? I would love to do idea pads. Um, it's not on our roadmap yet. Um, it's yeah. I, I think it would be a, a good one to add. There's quite a lot is uh, we're seeing. We, we we've grown the portfolio a lot this year. Um, we have full configuration um, on the workstations and mobile workstations, and we're doing most of the ThinkPads. There's just a couple that aren't on there. Um, so it's a little bit case of as long as the Linux program is successful and goes well, and the team can grow. Um, I hope we can add those, but no, they are not on the roadmap right now. Uh, we're quite a small team, and and we're pretty full on right now. So, uh, honestly, for the other thing I should comment is a lot of what Lenovo does is very customer focused. It's important for us to do what customers are asking for. So keep letting me know, and so the more I the more I have details of how popular Linux on a platform is the easier it is for me to convince executives to spend the time and money. It's not cheap doing this, you know, to to support these. So, uh, if anybody has good ways of getting me that data, I'm interested. And John, ch chip in if I'm saying anything silly, or if you want to correct anything about anything, I'm kind of uh, no. You're wrong. you're right on point. I mean, it, it, <laughs> really, the hard part for the preload is is making the business case. So. Um, mm -hmm. Any feedback you guys can give us in terms of what platforms you'd be most interested in, how many users you expect, that type of all of anything like that will only help increase the likelihood of us being able to roll something out. Yeah. And, and, and so, for example, I know I've heard from a lot of different um, people in the open source community, um, AMD is, is, has been, I've had lots of questions about AMD. Um, so it's, it's kind of interesting to see the ARM one. I have heard ARM, but not to the same extent as, as AMD. Um, 
actually, you know what? I'm just just because it's right there in front of me. I'm going to answer the core boot one. Uh, no, no, core boot's not not on the roadmap at all. Uh, just we don't. One of the things that we do do is the hardware is exactly the same as what we ship for Windows. Um, it's no difference. We don't have a special Linux model. It's like all the ones with Linux certifying is the Windows model. It does mean sometimes, uh, and I have some questions above about fingerprint readers that I will get to, but it does mean sometimes that that is a headache. On the plus side, it does mean, hey, we're getting Linux support from vendors for the same hardware. Um, so Core Boot, we have our BIOS, um, and it's just, yeah, I, that, one's, that one's not the roadmap. I feel like I'm answering a lot of questions No, but hmm, such is life. Um, so, do, do, do. so for the ARM one, uh, sorry, somebody added they've been a Lenovo customer for laptops and the ARM C4. So actually, we do have a really, uh, we have a few really nice ARM uh, laptops, and I'm trying to see. I was looking at it. So we have some which would be good candidates. And, and so I have genuinely looked into it. And the work the community are doing on there is, is, is excellent. So if I mean, Linux does actually run on it if you're willing to jump through the usual hoops of getting it working. The, the problem is, and it goes back to, to a little bit demand, is uh, we need to get approval and we need to get buy-in from you know, from the firmware teams and the hardware teams and the product and marketing teams. So uh, they they are not seeing the demand for it. And so one of the things I have to do is make sure if there is a demand for it, uh, we do it. So I have been talking to the ARM people. I'm hoping to go and listen in at the, they've got the ARM conference, uh, developer conference coming up soon. So I, they, I know they've got a presentation there with a Lenovo, uh, laptop and running arm on it if you're interested in that if you're going uh, keep an eye out for that so i totally agree on it being chicken and egg it's and and it's honestly it's one of the challenges for, for doing a debian preload for doing for doing linux on laptops part of it is proving that there is the demand and um we have to be a little bit careful to to not do too much at once as well be, we we don't want to release bad quality stuff it's you know got our Lenovo brand on it, it has to make sure it's up to a good standard and that we're doing everything correctly. So that, there's lots of pieces in there. Uh, I hope that helped answer the question. Um, platform. Uh, yeah, comment. no, is not yet, Mark. Yes. <laughs> Can I share a roadmap? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I don't know if I can. I'd like to. Uh, for the platforms coming out this year, um, what, well, let me find out if I can. I will post something on here tomorrow and see what I'm allowed to share. I think I can probably share what we've got planned for this year's. I obviously can't share next year's platforms, but this year's, yes. Um, so, oh, the question disappeared. Anyway. That was why I was answering. Um, there's a question, is it possible to get them without the Intel ME? Uh, that ties back into the question of we also ship these with Windows. So no, or not yet, not yet. Yeah, <laughs> not on the roadmap. Uh, right, there was a question about Lenovo servers. Uh, Lenovo servers support uh, Red Hat, Fedora, and SUSE. No Debian or but number two is mentioned anyway. That is very true. Um, so I talk a little bit with the Lenovo server folk, but uh, they are a completely separate group. They don't, they, you know, they, they, they're not part of what we do. Um, so I, I, I have some ideas of what they're up to, but, um, I can't speak for them, I'm afraid. So I'm not able to answer any questions about what they're doing. Um, can I give a contact email address for service sales? I'd be interested in cold storage to you servers and computer servers with lots of RAM and big AMD 80 core CPUs. Right, uh, John, do you know that one? Does that fall into your side of the camp in any way through workstations? Do you have any links into the server for their uh, server sales people? I don't have anything I can say off the top of my head. Um, I think we'd need to chase that down offline. Okay. And yeah, so it. I'm not sure who put that question in, 
can you send send me an email and we'll find find that name for you i i don't have it on top of my head either um all righty uh so uh hello from greece uh let me see is this yasu i did used to speak a little bit of greek but i i wrote i wrote that just yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how, how is it supposed to be pronounced uh, I, I mean, I don't really speak that much Greek, but like Yasu. <laughs> Yasu. Okay. Um, at the organization, do you want to ask the questions? You're there. Well, I shouldn't read your question. Ask the question. You're on. You're you're on the. Oh no no, no, it's not my question. It's not oh, my it's question. Not ah. No, it's not mine. Oh, okay. All right. I will I'm read California, the not there. Greece. Yeah. Good. Well, you might have Greek roots. Uh, but yeah, good point. I am Greek. Tell me that. But yeah. <laughs> this is getting weird. Um, at the organization I work for, we use Debian, and our workstations are Lenovo laptops. Awesome. On Debian X17 and 8th and ThinkPads L14, we are getting the latest kernel from Buster Backports, also the drivers. Will ever Debian stable will be on par, drivers and firmware wise, with the newer Lenovo hardware? So I don't think that's actually a question for me. And I don't know if we have anybody on here who can answer it. But if you had the Carbon X17 and 8, how did you find audio? Um, so um, I'm going to take a little great from questions just going to use this one as a segue just to bring up a few of the debian things and i will come back to them because this at carbon x1 code 7 actually or x18 actually gets covered specifically so um i didn't manage to organize this one so they came up one by one um but on the slides um i wanted to just raise some of the things that we're doing specifically with debian so uh conference sponsorship obviously so that's probably fed up of seeing the Lenovo uh, logo fly by and that's why you have to put up with me being here um, but we we are sponsored conference and I think we're, we're covered for next year's as well so uh, thank you for letting us sponsor your conference and letting us be part of it um, genuinely thank you very much um, we've organized the developer portal so um, I won't talk about that one but hopefully that's uh, you know it's, it's part of us trying to contribute to the community and become part of it um, so that leads me into the biggest one. I, we, you know, we would love to contribute actively. Um, I have made some baby steps in there. I think I have two kernel patches that actually made it through. I think I might have had two or three that never made it. So, it's, <laughs> but uh, we would like to contribute. One of the things I think we can do, um, and again, I'd be interested in the feedback, uh, is we know what the patches are that go into making. X1 Carbon 7, X1 Carbon 8. We know we know the patches that are going upstream that are needed for our platform. So one of the things I was hoping to do is just try and get those pulled into Debian sooner. Um, so I, I've had some conversations with Ben. Uh, it's not the easiest process. A lot of that is honestly down to our inexperience as well. Um, but you know, I, I, I think that's one of the more useful ways we can contribute is by identifying where fixes are upstream that we can bring into Debian. If there, I would be very open to other ideas of how to contribute actively, you know, uh, in a developer scope. Uh, we, we do have a small team of technical people and we would like to be involved. So keep that one in your ear, you know, in your mind. If you sit there and go, you know what, it'd be actually good if Lenovo were directly involved rather than just, you know, then please let me know any ideas. Um, uh, I know I, I put a thank you to Paul Wise because he sent me a brilliant list of things that we can and should do. Um, and so I, I have received ideas from people in the community. Um, but yeah, this is kind of more on a technical, how can we make our platforms in Debian work better? Um, Interesting idea than that. Um, so we do actually test Debian uh, internally by our Lenovo QA. Um, we don't do it on all of the platforms, just to sort of highlight that. Uh, we have tested it on the X1 Carbon 8. We have tested it on the P1 Gen 2 and 3. Um, and I, you know, how much that program expands, I don't know. But it, part of the aim is we chose two of our more popular platforms and to try and get an idea of what issues there are with Debian. I will say it's been a fun exercise. The QA team started off by uh, grabbing, you know, the 10.5 and putting it on and and a bunch of stuff doesn't work because yeah and so you know then you have to say explain that go grab testing and the latest kernel and, and then things get better um there are still issues um 
one of the biggest ones, and specifically for the person who mentioned they use the X1 Carbon 7.8, is the SOF audio support from Intel uh, has not been in Debian. The firmware, the topology files are still missing. So we have um, donated a system. Uh, Maximilian said I could put his name on here, so hopefully he's all right with that. But anyway, he, he's got an X1 Carbon 8, and he's been working on it. Uh, he's done a bunch of... Uh, he's a bunch of firmware has been pushed upstream that improves uh, some of the networking and the Bluetooth already. I was having a look at those, and he is working on the SOF uh, audio support, uh, which I'm personally really excited about because it's been one of my frustrations that I I've been trying to work Debian and Intel to get this SOF firmware in, and I just didn't have the right ways of doing it. Uh, and and I appreciate it's not necessarily the most fun job to do, but uh, so. Having, I think, once that SOF audio portion is, is we should get to a stage where Debian's going to run out of the box on these platforms much better. So I'm genuinely excited by that. And if the same is useful going forwards, we can continue to follow that model. If you know, if it's a case of we need to, you know, if we need to get some hardware into a Debian developer's hands to do that, then that is, I was successful with this one, and it's something I'm happy to continue on. Um, new hardware isn't always the easiest thing to get hold of, but um, it's a possibility. And I'd like to, again, bring that back into, I'd like it so Lenovo are actively contributing as well. I, I, it's, it's good to hand out the hardware and, and get every end that way, but I would like us to also be involved too. Um, and just before I go back to questions, I do want to just give a shout out so that I, I, I know I haven't got everybody, but there, there's a few people who have gone out of their way to help me and answer questions and just point me in the right direction. So um, Hector, Hector Martinez has been fantastic. He, you know, he's handled a lot of our questions and helped us out with a, a bunch of things. I, he's genuinely been, he, he's, he's been my go-to guy. Um, Paul Wise, again, he sent me lots of information and suggestions on things to do. Uh, Raphael and, and, and Jonathan, again, just thank you for the time. Really appreciate it. We're new, we're new to the community and, uh, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a learning curve. So do that. So. I think I'll jump back to the questions. We can, you, we'll, we'll go back to slides if the questions die down. I'm not, not sure if that's going to happen. John, have you been able to look and follow them and seen any to pick out in particular? Or um, uh, No, for some reason, the, the questions aren't showing up for me in my window. I don't know why. Oh, let, let me just stick it in. Um, so I'll, I'll send it to you. Just, you you're on the, uh, the Etherpad thing. They're not, they're not updating. Oh, I don't actually have the Etherpad link, sorry. Oh, well, that's my bad. All right, let me send you that. That will help a lot, and then you can jump in and take questions where we uh, feel that, uh, where have you gone? Sorry, the, uh, Etherpad, the Etherpad link is on the uh, talk page. Yeah. Also, posting it in the Ditsy chat. Yeah, I think I just sent Perfect, John the Ditsy you. link, unfortunately. Have you got it? Yeah, I've got it. Yeah. Uh, it's coming up right now. Oh, awesome. Well done. All righty. Um, I'm just going to take a couple of from the top, just because I didn't want to ignore them. Um, and these were people who put their questions in nice and early. Um, there was a question from Razor, uh, how to send patches to fix HCPI tables in BIOS. So short answer is send them, uh, you know, bug me, um, or come to our forums, uh, which I'll get to. Uh, I did look at that particular case. That's for an old laptop and one that is not, unfortunately, I don't believe Linux supported. So um, I will caveat this. So we go out of, we, we really, really try to support Linux on all of our platforms, but the levers that I can pull on to get stuff done are a lot, lot smaller for platforms that are not on our Linux certified list. I just, for stuff to get a BIOS team to make changes, bearing in mind that they can't impact Windows. Windows is still, still our main, you know, still the main OS at Lenovo. Let's be realistic about that. So um, BIOS changes are the hardest to get done. Just that's the way life is. Um, but obviously, if we have things that are broken, if it's a Linux certified platform, I have levers to pull on to get that fixed. Uh, if it's not a Linux certified platform, then we, we can talk to the BIOS team. I just can't guarantee they will accept to do it. It, it. It's really case by case. So, but yeah, so the intent of the question, if you find issues, come, come talk, come talk to me or, um, and, and our, our, our Lenovo forms are actually pretty good. you I mean, my team monitor them, um, but you get 
I mean, the great thing with open source community, right? There's lots of really, there's smart people out there um, who will throw in extra information. Alrighty, uh, so we kind of talked about servers, so I won't answer that question. So, okay, um, quite a long question. So I, I will summarize it a little bit, but some Lenovo laptops are sold with the suggestion they will be supported by Ubuntu or Fedora. However, not all hardware is supported by Linux by all advertised models. And they give the example of the Synaptics uh, touch fingerprint reader, which is lacking support in libf print, and there's some hacks to get around it um, on T480. So yes, that is absolutely true. Um, the other one that comes up a lot is W1. So the Synapt so the fingerprint reader, we, it, we are reliant on hardware vendors. Um, so we worked with Synaptics. The fingerprint reader does work on a number of last year's platforms. X1 Carbon, it will work on. The P1, it will work on. P53, um, I don't remember them all off the top of my head. It will work on a number of last year's platforms. It is on, now I have to be careful because I told it was on all of this year's platforms, but there is an L14 which doesn't have it. Uh, which was a little bit irritated about. But the vast majority of this year's platforms have got that reader which has Linux support and the fingerprint team were s reminded of how important it was to make sure they continued having uh, Linux support on their platforms. So the fingerprint reader is, is an example of where we are working with the hardware vendors and making sure that got done. It was kind of interesting and like the firmware for it is on LBFS if you have one of these platforms which does have the supported reader, uh, I think it's the 9B one, then uh, LVFS update and make sure you've got uh, the, the the latest libfprint and fprintd installed and it should work. Um, oh, but So the problem with the ones that it doesn't is the vendor doesn't want to support it. I think they're match on host device uh, and the vendor is worried about intellectual IP and we have not been able to convince them to support it. Uh, and unfortunately, Lenovo can't really support uh, some of the hacks that get around it, it's just not really fair to our vendors either. So um, yeah, that summarizes that. Um, and so I sh you know, the, the other point I want to take more from this question is we work really hard to support all of the hardware on the platform. Um, there are a few other cases. W1 is the main one that comes up. Uh, W1 support in Linux is, is kind of hard because of FCC regulations. Um, we are working on it, and we are hoping to have a solution uh, later in the year for the X1 Carbon 8 and the X1 Yoga 5. Um, it's, but it's, again, it's not easy. There are regulations in place, and open source makes that a uh, harder technical challenge to solve. I, I know there's some W1 people out there who will call me out on that, but anyway, from Lenovo's point of view, um, it's a tricky one, but we are working on that. Other than that, um, RAID um, comes up just because Intel doesn't have, you know, I mean, RAID works, but not the, the Intel RAID because it's not open sourced. Um, and then we get into kind of funny pieces like the NFC reader. It works, but you have to jump through some hoops to make it work. Um, sometimes IR camera comes up as not supported. That, that's getting better as well. So all of these things, we are working as a team. We're kind of aware of them. Um, and yeah, it's not perfect, but we trying really hard to make it better. And and so like for the fingerprint reader, all our Linux certified platforms should be, uh, I suppose, be getting the Linux supported uh, piece. Going back in time is, is is harder. John, did you want to add anything to that one from your experience? No, I think that that more or less covers it. It's it's primarily a legal legal yeah. piece. The FCC regulations. Okay. Um, so, what is expected that LVFS updates from Lenovo would stop erasing Grub from UEFI and allow seamless FW update? upgrade without needing to rescue and install it. So that one's slightly curious to me because um, we support LVFS updates. Our firmware is up on LVFS. I talked to Richard Hughes, uh, the uh, LVFS maintainer, quite a bit. Um, and yeah, we, we, again, it's not perfect. There are some devices where the vendor doesn't have LVFS update support available yet. I know there's an SSD drive that doesn't. Um, and W12, but 
it's uh, we are pushing all our hardware vendors to support it, all of our BIOSes, firmware, system firmware updates, Thunderbolt updates are on LVFS. And I haven't seen an issue with having to rescue Grub. So I might have to take that one offline with some specifics. Um, but at least going forward, it should work. And I think LVFS is important. Uh, and, and if for some reason you do see that problem, do by all means open a support ticket. And hmm. they will route it to Mark's team so that they can dig in and figure yeah. out what exactly it is that went wrong and how we can fix it. So there was uh, the question. There's a question immediately below that, um, will Debian be, oh, so yeah, it had two pieces to this question. So will Debian be at any time a target for test and verification with a Lenovo Linux certified laptop? So I covered that a bit, some some do. Uh, honestly, and, and please don't take this the wrong way, but Debian's kind of one of the harder ones to, you know, a harder distro to work with in the, you know, to response. And, and I think because we're new, we need to build up the relationship so that we can we can address these things quicker. That's one of the key aims why I'm here. I kind of it'd be nice to get a bit more two way, but um, yeah, we we want to we want to do more. Um, we need to find ways to make the Debian experience of getting support in easier, quicker, and and all the rest. So we we talked about that before. Um, they then had that the the follow on to this question was that the uh, laptop will not break on updates by LVFS or any UFI setting, and they pointed to quite a long thread on our forums about Thunderbolt support and it bricking it on a P52. So uh, I checked out the thread. Um, it was before I joined the team. So um, LVFS has been a learning curve for our firmware teams. And, and I know we've had mistakes along the way. We do test our updates. Um, did you, did you sound like you want to I, jump in, John? I think, if I'm remembering that issue correctly, I think it was actually a, a fundamental Thunderbolt issue on Intel side. Um, okay. That it, it wasn't so much the the LVFS um, firmware for it specifically. It was just that there was something wrong in the firmware that there were even problems on the Windows side. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, it was quite a long long thread on the forum. So I have to admit, I didn't get through all through it. It was 15 pages worth. Um, so um, I didn't I didn't get through the details. Thanks, John. Um, I'm just going to pause. Is there anybody on the Jitsi? Uh, who who did get a link? Who wanted to ask a question? I should give just give a chance, and I'm just seeing uh, if anybody else. So um, I didn't have any other requests. But anything on there? Well, we good. Okay. Um, so doodle, 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 doodle. so uh, I don't know if I want to read. Or there's a long comment about Positivo, uh, manufacturer of computers in Brazil. I think. This is more feedback. So um, they have a policy that the computer can run both some version of Microsoft and some distribution of new of uh, GNU Linux, um, so that it and it and it permeates backwards through their supply chains and designs. If Lenovo did the same, then their suppliers would see the necessity of making sure devices were able to be supported in the Linux kernel, and distributors and customers customers who want new Linux on their systems feel more confident of support. So absolutely 100% agree with that. Um, yes. And that's where we're aiming for. So as part of our, you know, when, when we're designing a new platform, Linux is a part of that. The hardware vendors need to make sure that their devices are supported on Linux. Um, and yes, so we, we're not, the, I guess the, the important caveat there is it's not across the entire Lenovo product line. Um, and I, yeah, I, I hope it does permeate anyway. I, you know, I think hardware vendors are getting how important Linux is. It's seeing increased Linux usage demand. That's why Lenovo is doing it. We're seeing an increased Linux demand. But, you know, I mean, Lenovo is not, not going to do it otherwise. Uh, so I, I hope that that does see um, overall Linux support from hardware vendors increase uh, improving. Uh, I'm seeing it for for the devices we use. Um, I'd be intrigued to see if that's true, uh, you know, across across the industry. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I I'm hoping Lenovo are going to help drive that. Um, I know when I talk to hardware vendors that I'm, you know, make sure that's uh, that's the case. Um, so uh, hopefully I've covered that one. Oh, hey Jonathan. Hello, Mark. <laughs> How you doing? 
Uh, good. I'm very impressed by your skills by managing the slides and the Jitsi and the Etherpad in the chat because most most Debian developers aren't quite on that level when it comes to this. So, well, it's kind of funny. I have a whole bunch of other slides. I don't think we're going to get to them. And I think I can just share these slides so you guys can look through them. I, you know, I'm going to do a really quick whip through. Just I, I, We've only got five minutes left on the call. I don't know how it works for getting shut down or not. Go, um, go, go, go. So I, I, I'll, I'll go through them just, just so you guys see them and if there's if they trigger any questions. So um, I kind of did a little bit of a walk through of what was involved releasing a Linux platform. This was based on on the Fedora project experience, which I figure is oh, not a million miles away from you guys. I, I, I know they have Red Hat engineers uh, that make that life a little bit easier. But just so you guys know what's involved with releasing a uh, platform. So um, particular case, February, project kickoff, got together, decided that actually it was going to happen, get everybody, all the stakeholders to agree. So. Um, did that and then February to April we have the you know the the initial image testing bug fixing cursing Nuvo driver Nvidia driver you know all, all the usual stuff um, fixing the issues and try getting to stage where we're comfortable with it uh, and then so we had our GA image in May uh, and at that point we take the GA image and it goes back to PA and it goes through a final testing pass just to make sure there's no you know critical high important fixes. Uh, we have to do energy certification. This has been um, a new thing for me. Um, energy certification is so much fun. Um, <laughs> we have to make sure we hit worldwide standards. Uh, it's going to be really good. I think uh, I'm expecting, I, I, I have contributed a patch up to system D. I think this is going to help improve Linux. You know, it should have some effects on making Linux uh, energy usage better, but it's a challenge. Uh, some platforms fly through uh, and some platforms not so much so uh, energy certification is is is, is always fun um, product documentation um, we have a Linux user guide and it needs to be written and it needs to be checked and all that stuff so that takes time um, one of the big things and I think this will benefit Debian users too but uh, previously if you called Lenovo and said I have a problem with my x1 carbon uh, you know it, I'm running Linux and this is not happening. They would say, we don't support it, install Windows, go away. Um, they shouldn't do that anymore. Um, so I've done a bunch of training with our support team. So you should now be able to say, hey, I'm using Linux now. When you say you're using Debian, you might still get some pushback. So just pretend you're running something different. Or, but you should, they, what, what's, a, what's likely to happen, honestly, is they should accept the call and it will get escalated to my team eventually. So don't do too many calls. But yeah, no, <laughs> we, we, when, when in doubt, the magic words are escalating. Yes, yeah, yeah. So, but we, we, we genuinely, we try and support Linux. We try not to be focused on a distro. Obviously, we have the ones that we work with, but uh, we try and support Linux uh, as much as we can. And, and then the bit that for me was a, a real concern. So there's all these configuration rules, a configurator, configura yeah, configuration figures a lot. Um, there's a whole bunch of launch logistics that happens when you actually want to get a system up on the web. So it's kind of funny. July's president is kind of sitting there going, wow. Um, but that's the bit we're in at the moment. There's just process, especially with the first time and, um, you know, people sitting going, what's the next? So yeah, August web sales launch. August 31st, so I'm hoping I never have to update the slide deck to say September, but uh, yeah. So that's a quick overview of that. Um, I'm not going to, I'm just going to whip through. The next two, I will whip through these. These are not actually my slides. These are my previous bosses, but we use this talking to customers just to kind of give them an idea of what we're doing for Linux and is there Suck it up. Uh, yeah, I mean, most of it, I think we've talked about. There's LVFS, which is important. Uh, we've done some doc stuff. So anyway, uh, I'll, I'll get a bit more detail, but it's kind of like the, the pretty, pretty picture. I'm not capable of writing slides like this. Somebody else has to do this. This is beyond my art skills, and, and I'm not sure. The holding hands is good. Um, and this is very much the same. Um, similar. I'll just leave it up for a few seconds to so you can sit there and go, OK. But um, yeah, there's lots we do. That. I'm going to highlight working with the IHVs. Uh, that's the hardware vendors. It took me a while to figure out what that was. <laughs> um, and, and LVFS firmware update. So uh, it's a lot of that. I'm starting to lose my voice. Um, so somebody asked about, um, anyway. There's, there is our Linux forum. We have a, uh, you know, we have a Linux forum. A lot of stuff ends up in the, uh, so, you know, we have a Fedora, Red Hat, Ubuntu section. Uh, 
potentially we can add a Debian section. That would not be a difficult thing to do if we start seeing lots of Debian questions, or maybe if it's something, you know, think having a Debian section would be good. I'm, I'm, I'm open to that uh, at the moment. We don't have one. Um, but yeah, we get quite a lot of questions on there. It's uh, one of the things I struggle a little bit to keep up with it, but there's always lots of interesting discussions, and it's, it's a good place to start. My team do, do monitor it. Um, I wanted to mention just some of the work we're doing with the open source com community. So we have, you know, we've been patches upstream, uh, working with audio people on audio issues, GNOME, System D, Thermal Demon. Uh, I, I, I'm surprised there hasn't been a thermal question in the link. Maybe I've not found it yet. Um, but yeah, usually there's a thermal question. I love thermal questions. Uh, <laughs> Graphics, graphics is always fun too. Um, I do, just you know, I I, I do. Uh, I am on the Debian project, Debian kernel, Debian develop main list. I'll be honest, I filter them if the word Lenovo shows up because uh, there's a lot of stuff on there. I read, I do read stuff. I, I know Jonathan when you know when there was the recent elections. I I read through those. I do try and go in there uh, and pick on subjects that look interesting. You guys have a very active community. It's fantastic. Keep it up. Um, but I do, you know. I'm on there, um, so if, uh, uh, was there a question? Uh, no. Um, You're going to wrap up? Oh, yeah, we, uh, yeah. <laughs> ah, okay, last one. Um, there is a LVFS, the uh, oh. ThinkPad for LVFS questions. Okay. May, oh, may I also yeah. steal another 30 seconds of the time? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Time. Um, I'm sorry. I do, yeah. <laughs> and so, I will, yeah, go for it. <laughs> This question is about the U.S. launch and how soon we can expect to launch outside of the U.S. for the uh, for Debian developers being able to buy hardware. Is that something you can answer now, or should we wait know. for the announcement? Okay. Uh, no, so I don't know. Is the short answer? So okay. actually, John, John, you had a good answer for this. Can I put you on the spot for the out of the U.S. Uh, things? Because I know you, you've thought of this question. It, it completely and totally depends on each geo. It's it's not something we have any direct control over. Uh -huh. um, but I I would say that it's reasonable that within in about two weeks or so, we should have an idea of what the schedules look like and be able to share something. So, yeah, we'll we'll push. Um, but yeah, I still don't know the pricing on these Linux laptops. If it's any consolation, I'm just sitting there. That's the other question I usually get. It's like, what's the price going to be? Well, I don't know. Well, so, I, I can <laughs> tell you what I've got. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't. You don't. You don't have the Linux price. Yeah, um, Windows price. Ah. Uh, Okay. The one, the one other thing I was going to mention on, on the, um, the portal is just because you don't see something as an off option on yes. the web does not necessarily mean it's not an option. Um, mm. There's a number that'll pop up on the side there. And if you call that, it'll drop you into the inbound sales team. And they actually have access to a different configurator that can frequently configure hardware selections that you might not actually have access to on the web link. So um, this is especially a big point for for those folks in in different geos where they're they may not offer a specific product on the web. So in some cases, they might actually have it available through that route. So so yeah, if you're uh, so I'm Jonathan, I'm going to use you as an example. But if you're in South Africa and you want your X1 carbonate, you could if even if it's not showing up on a web page with Linux, uh, even if it's not showing up on the page, you can phone and they should do it for you. I don't know how that will work with the uh, portal as well. That would be interesting. And I don't, sorry, Jonathan, I don't know when you joined, but the portal, the important point, at the moment, it's only enabled for US and Canada. Uh, so we are working on rolling that out worldwide too. I don't have a date for that either. It's, we've got to go through every geo and, and get them to do it. So we are, we are working on that. Um, I'm happy to stay and ask questions, but obviously I'm sure people have lives to get to. Uh, I, let me know what works from your Debian recording um, presentation point of view. If you have to keep me out, that's cool too. We probably uh, need to wrap up. Uh, actually, okay. we should probably wrap up right now. We're a bit over. Um, <laughs> okay, it's, sorry. It's fine. I th I th um, <laughs> thank you. Uh, you know, thank you for uh, the future's looking pretty bright for Lenovo and Debian. Uh, I I really so, appreciate it. It was a very interesting talk, and if, uh, I'm definitely. Definitely going to be considering using uh, Lenovo now. So well, that's that, well, that's fantastic. And um, but honestly, my main aim for this is yes, obviously Lenovo doing Linux. So that's the key point number one. And I genuinely feedback from the community of ways we can do things with you, get involved, make this. Uh, that that's that's really one. I mean, the, the, the best stuff. I I think it's good to share how we're doing Linux, right? And one last point, because I say this to everybody. 
let me know if we're doing anything wrong as well. Uh, that's important to me. I want to make sure Lenovo is doing Linux right. Uh, I think that's important to communities like this. I actually, Bruce Perrins' talk was really interesting. Uh, I think we're doing all the right things. Um, but yeah, let me know. I, 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 good and bad. And I, I'll stop talking. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Have a good uh, morning, evening.